on this episode of Operation Mustangs and More, late model restoration parts sent me some more Fox Body stuff. We're having more fun with those Fox Body cars. Keep sending me that stuff, uh, late model. And uh, I got a headlight relay system that a company sent me. When you're running a halogen headlight on these older Mustangs, it's a good idea to put a, a relay system in it. Uh, I'm going to show you what that's all about. Also on a power brake conversion kit I got, there's a pedal assembly that they sent me that I think everybody would be interested in. The 5.4 Ford engines, big problem out there with spark plugs. This classic car shop overcame it, did a lot of internet research, had some great results. And I'm test driving a 68 Pontiac Firebird. Whoa, whoa, calm down, calm down. I just wanted to see what the other side of the aisle was all about. You know, test driving one of their cars, the GM cars, compared to the Mustangs, and I'll let you know what the results are. So stay tuned to the show. Once in a while I get to take out uh, something else other than a Mustang and I remember when these cars were fairly new sitting in a uh, 68 Pontiac Firebird and GM cars they have their own feel to them uh, they had Saginaw steering gearboxes to them which were a bigger gearbox more made for a full-size automobile uh, they had a full frame front end on them meaning that the frame of the car could be removed underneath the front of the car as opposed to a Mustang where all that stuff is uh, welded together. Um, and a lot of their components were carryovers from their full-size and mid-size cars and just put on these little cars, you know, which were kind of little back then. So this thing steers down the road. I hate to say it, it steers down the road better than, say, a 68 Mustang. Uh, it really does. Uh, because the steering gearbox is just this massive thing, which they actually brought in and they put on the Saginaw steer, steering gearbox on the 71 and 73 Mustangs. Uh, and 71 and 73 Mustangs have a lot of General Motors overtones on them because the uh, president of General Motors came over to Ford Motor Company and his influence was splashed on the 71 and 73 Mustangs. A guy by the name of Bunky Knudsen. But anyways, getting back to this car, uh, this thing happens to have a five-speed trans in it, which really makes it a pleasure to drive. If you look at a couple of my episodes before, I covered how the five-speed transmissions work so well in these classic cars, and this Firebird is no exception. Uh, but it steers good down the road. The power disc brake setup is nice, again, because it's off of their mid and full-size cars and just adapted to these uh, smaller cars. But uh, this one's got plenty of power. Nice sound. And it'll wind out, and then you put in that fifth gear, boom. You're cruising, man. You're cruising. But, um, you know, every once in a while, it's nice to get out and drive something a little different uh, other than a Mustang. My heart's still with the Mustangs, don't get me wrong. Uh, my heart's still with Mustangs. I love those cars. But uh, ain't nothing wrong with a nice little GM car. We'll run it through its gears a little bit over here. So I need to see how this thing's run. I was doing a little carburetor work to this thing earlier today. And uh, we'll see how she, how she gets up and goes over here. Yeah, that breaks them loose easy. These Pontiac uh, 400s, tell you what, they're strong torquey engines. Real torquey. Oh yeah, nice, nice ride. I'm satisfied with this one, nice car. I don't want one of these. Order a bunch of parts to get ready for the car show this weekend. And I got a hot deal too. You think? 
think again. Oh, man. Tired of back orders? You need NPD. With four strategically located superstores, orders are shipped direct to your door within one to three business days. National Parts Depot has quality restoration parts for Ford truck, Mustang, Camaro, Chevelle, and Firebird. For your free catalog, visit NPD online or call toll free. You know, these older classic cars, whether it be a Mustang, a Camaro, a Firebird, uh, whatever it might be that was made in the 60s and 70s, heck, even a Lincoln or a Cadillac, they had a simple 12-volt system with an alternator on them that only put out maybe 35, 40 amps. Some of the Lincolns had maybe 60 amp alternators, but most of the little Fords like this only had a 35, 40 amp alternator. And the issue there is you start drawing on the uh, charging system on an old car and you, your lights are going to get dim. Things just aren't going to function real well. Well, there's a couple of ways of dealing with that. You can upgrade your alternator. You can go from, say, a 30, 40 amp alternator to a 60, 65 alternator, uh, amp alternator. You can even get it up there to a 100 amp alternator. We've done a lot of those conversions. You know, for those guys that have those boom box kind of sound systems where they got to vibrate the whole car, you got to make sure you got at least a 100 amp alternator in there to support that kind of a system. But for the guy that wants to keep his car relatively stock, not change his alternator from maybe the outwardly appearance of the thing, because it does take away from points at a car show, there's a company out there uh, called Classic Cougar Innovations. Now this guy here, Bob McClure, McC McCullen, <laughs> sorry Bob, um, he's been around with electrical stuff forever. This guy is an electrical genius. He's come up with so much stuff that you can retrofit on these things in the way of tachometers, voltmeters, relay kits, wiper delays, all sorts of stuff. And he's done it in a way where you can kind of keep the car looking stock and not really cluttering it up much at all. <clears throat> One of the issues with retrofitting a set of, say, halogen headlights in a classic car, like a Mustang, is that it'll draw on that headlight switch. Now, a lot of you older Mustangs have experienced this. You're driving down the road, it's at night, you got your wife or your girlfriend in the car, and all of a sudden the headlights start going out and coming on, and going out and coming on. Well, the little relay uh, or breaker that's inside the headlight switch is getting fatigued. It's getting pulled on too much. Maybe you added some fog lights to the system. Maybe you added those halogen headlight systems. Maybe your headlight switch is just bad. But it wasn't a very good idea then, and it certainly didn't translate to be anything really good now. So what Rocket Man has come up with is a relay system, meaning that instead of the brunt of the current flowing through the headlight switch, it is now going through these relays here. So the headlight switch is, is working more as to ground these relays rather than have uh, current going straight to the headlamps themselves. And let me show you how this kit works out. It's a really neat kit. It's a really simple kit for you guys that want to keep your cars stock at home, but put halogen headlights in there and pull some amps. This is a great thing for you guys. Number one, the instruction sheet he gives it just explains it out, man. It's all laid out there for you. It shows you where your headlights are. It shows you where your relays are. It explains it. It's only a four or five step process. It's not that big a deal to do. First thing you'll do is you'll identify what you have. He gives you two of these relays. One goes to the left side and one goes to the right side. Uh, he gives you this little circuit breaker here that goes in series with the starter relay wire. Here's your positive wire running off of here. So you'll run some current from the positive side of the starter relay uh, to the circuit breaker. And then from there, you'll run it off of this nice little wire loom he gives you that has a, it's a purple wire that'll run to this blue wire on the relay box. Then the last thing you'll do is real simple is you'll reach down in here and you'll unplug the original wire loom that leads to your headlight then you'll bridge the two wire looms together with Bob's relay. And then lastly, you'll plug in the purple wire. So once you have all those three little wire connectors connected in, then what you'll do is you'll mount it. Now you can mount this thing in a couple of different areas. It's, it's an easy thing to hide. For you guys that want to keep things stock, it's an easy thing to hide, so don't be intimidated by it. But what it does do for you is now instead of your headlight 
being drawn on by, by the current coming out of the battery, your headlight switch will now be drawn on through this whole relay system here. And what I've done here is I've got Bob's system hooked up to this passenger side headlight and I got Ford's stock system hooked up to the driver's side headlight. So we're going to back up a little bit. I'm going to turn the headlights on and you'll see how much brighter just even just putting the kit on without putting any headlight, uh, halogen headlights in there. You'll see how much brighter this is. Let me kick the switch on. Now because current is flowing in a different manner, it's able to give more current to the headlight itself, to the seal beam itself, on that side there, as opposed to flowing through the original switch and then coming back out and finally reaching the, this uh, seal beam on this side here. So just even putting Bob's uh, relay system on the car has just made the one headlight brighter just by doing that without actually putting a halogen headlight in there. The other thing it helps out is to a lot of you classic car guys out there, we've all done it, we're riding down the road, it's in the middle of the night, and your, headlight, or your headlights not only are kind of pulsing a little bit, and maybe even going out, but your dash lights, the lighting that goes behind your instrument cluster there, is kind of like either flashing or flickering, or it's just very dim and dull. Again, all the current is being carried through that one headlight switch, it's one circuit trying to power all these things, and it doesn't work out real well. So I go onto Bob's website. Um, he's classic car innovators. The guy's an electrical genius. He's got all sorts of other stuff out there. For you guys that have factory tachometers and you're not sure where to send it to to have it fixed, Bob's the guy to do it. Check it out. I'm going to finish hooking this thing up and uh, get my halogen headlights in. You know, the Fox body and late model Mustangs are just too cool. Heck, I got a Fox body, I'm running on hydrogen. Well, the guys over at Late Model Restoration, they've been around since 1999. They were doing Fox bodies before it was cool to do Fox bodies. They got parts for the Fox body car, the SN95, the SN97, the Cobra R cars, the Bullet cars, they got it all over there. If you go to their Facebook, they're giving away a $250 gift card every month. And they got a free shipping program that beats them all. So check them out, go to LateModelRestoration.com. You know, we don't only work on Mustangs here at Mustang Restorations, we work on a lot of these classic Cougars. They made these things side by side, front to back on the same assembly line as the Mustangs. And uh, these are cool cars. They got a lot of luxury ride to them. They did something with the sound deadening on them. You know, these, these were sold through Lincoln Mercury dealers, so they had to be like an upscale Mustang is what they were. For the businessman who wore a white shirt and a tie, he'd get into one of these Cougars. And the thing about it is you could pretty much get the same engine combination on a Cougar that you could on a Mustang. So that's the cool thing about these. But uh, anyways, we're going to talk about some clubs. Uh, there's a club that's fairly local called the Stallions Gate Club. And they've been around since the late 80s. Great club, great local club. I've been to a lot of their events. Nice people to deal with, too. Real nice people. Uh, so check out their website. Uh, go on uh, to uh, Stallions Gate and check them out. Also, the uh, Wisconsin Early Mustangers, another great club. I've been to a few of their events. I've been to a few of their meetings. And uh, great people up there in Wisconsin. So for you people that have a Mustang or even a Cougar up there in Wisconsin or northern Illinois, Check out the early Mustangers up there in Wisconsin. Great people to deal with. And uh, until next time, we'll see what other clubs are out there on the Internet. You know, a lot of these 60s and even 70s uh, muscle cars have a problem with where when you shut it off, the thing continues to want to run. That's called dieseling is when it does that. And the reason why it does that is because it's getting still an entry of gasoline, it's getting an entry of air, and the cylinders are so hot that it's able to ignite that gas and air, um, like a diesel engine runs. And diesel engines don't have spark plugs or spark plug wires or none of that stuff, yet they run. Well, the same principle uh, applies to when an automobile engine like this continues to run when you shut it off the amount of compression it has, the gasoline that's still being sucked down the carburetor, the air, all contributes to that thing having a runover or a dieseling effect. Well, the way that we uh, take care of a problem like, like that is I put what's called an electric idle solenoid on it. And that's this thing here. 
The idea to stop it from dieseling or overrunning when you shut it off is to make sure the throttle plates are shut completely. So we've put this solenoid on here to keep the idle on it when it's running, but to positively shut the throttle plates off when the car is shut off. Let me show you how that works. By turning the key on, that little plunger shoots out and holds the throttle plate up. And then when I shut the key off, it positively comes back and actually shuts the throttle plates down to keep any more gas or air from entering the engine and then of course making that whole dieseling effect where the engine wants to continue to run. We've all had that on our cars where you shut them off and they keep continue to go pop it to pop it to pop it to pop it to. Nobody likes that. It's one of the most embarrassing things you could have, especially with a with a cool car. Well that kind of there that kind of thing there is the fix for something like that. I've been putting those things on for years and haven't had a problem with them since. So it's a good fix and uh, something you should look for in a couple of my upcoming episodes. I'll go over that and a bunch of other effects that make dieseling happen. You know, everybody seems to like a classic car for their looks. And, uh, you know, these old Mustangs and Camaros and Chevelles and muscle cars and really even Cadillacs and Lincolns, they're all real cool looking things. But the mechanics of the cars have come such a long way in the last 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, so a lot of my customers, they ask me, you know, hey, what can we do about the brakes and the steering on these, this car? It, it, it's got a drum brake system on there. I got to use a lot of pedal effort, especially for you ladies out there. It's difficult for you. And what, what's offered for all these muscle cars and uh, old classic cars is a power brake conversion kit. This is a really nice feature to put on the car because this allows you to just use very little effort as far as your leg goes and this whole booster and master cylinder assembly does the work for you. But it's more than just mounting this thing on the engine compartment side uh, and hooking it up to some vacuum. If you notice here I got this brand new master cylinder on there. In episode 15 there's a whole how-to on bleeding the uh, master cylinder before it's put on. It's very important that that master cylinder gets bench bled before it gets attached to that uh, power booster back there. Um, but what you got is on the inside of the car, the pedal itself is what you need to replace on these things because it dangles in a different spot. And I'm going to show you what's going on here. I have a pedal support here bracket and the original one was bolted in say where this hole is here so it would hinge here the replacement power brake one gets bolted all the way up inside there and the idea behind it here is to hinge it up further and by hinging it up further it allows the brake pedal to do more of the effort than the uh, than your leg has to do down here it takes more effort to push this thing when it's hinging here than when it's hinging up there so this is actually a pretty cool thing if you just want to put one of these on your manual brake car. You could just put a pedal in there and you could get a little bit more of a power brake kind of feel by just changing the pedal. It's nothing like having power brakes, but that is definitely one link in the puzzle that you want to put in when you're doing a power brake conversion to the 67 to 70 Mustangs and a lot of the other muscle cars and classic cars that are out there. I've been doing more and more of these Fox Body Mustangs here in my shop, and one of the issues is the weather stripping on these things. Uh, I've had a couple of weather stripping videos for these, uh, for these Fox Bodies, and they had a whole different mindset on the Fox Body Mustangs as far as how their weather stripping fits. And what they did was they applied the weather stripping more to the open body of the car rather than put it on the hatch or the trunk lid or even the doors. Not a bad idea, really. I mean, it, it certainly sealed well. It made for a real easy installation. The problem is that every time you go to put something in the back of your, your Mustang here, you're scraping along the weather strip here and tearing this up. The other issue is on these type of weather strips, you can see by this margin right here, is that it shrinks. I mean, who would believe that it would shrink that much over time, but they do shrink like that. So a company called Late Model Restoration supplied us with brand new weather stripping for the back of this car. And uh, we're going to show you how to put that on. You need very little in the way of tools. You need a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, or this little screw gun I have. And then a pair of uh, tin snips, or something that will cut through 
a weather strip that has a metal reinforcement inside it. But first thing you'll do is you'll go around the interior trim panels and you'll remove the screws that kind of hold them in. Now this is a little easier than the door ones that we had done in a previous video. Because all you really need to do is loosen these up a bit. They don't really hold the weather strip on like you might think. They just kind of like crowd it a little bit. Now once you've loosened up all these interior moldings, it's basically just down to pulling the old weather strip off. See, the inside of this weather strip has a metal retainer in there that allows it to pinch or hold on to this pinch weld. So this is where they've welded two pieces of body panels together and they've left this little ledge here to enable the weather strip to attach to it. Good idea. Just go around and pull it off. Okay. It's not a bad idea when you're doing something like this. Take note, a lot of times there's an inside and an outside to a weather strip. So take, take note of something like that before you just go pulling it off of there and throwing it on the floor and then figure it out, all right, well, which is the inside, which is the outside. Like I say, I've been dealing with uh, late model restoration parts for a little while now, and everything they've sent me has been first class. The stuff fits really good. Now, yeah, just as I thought, there is an inside and an outside to this particular weather strip. You can see how this little ledge right here sits more to the inside of this uh, rubber than to the outside. So that would tell me that it is definitely directional. You know, just because things are newer doesn't necessarily mean that things are better. Uh, you know, they can send a man to the moon and they can do all these fancy things, but they can't make a spark plug that you can remove on a newer vehicle. Good example here is this 5.4 engine that Ford made. Uh, you go on the internet, you'll see what this is all about. There's a problem here with the removal of the spark plugs. Got a good friend of mine that dropped this off for me to give a quick tune-up on, which we normally don't do, but I work on some of the newer ones. And found out that pulling the spark plugs out isn't a matter of just pulling the spark plugs out. What happens here, because of dissimilar metals, meaning you got this stainless steel against the aluminum head, the spark plug actually separates itself and half of the spark plug will stay down inside the engine itself. You can see this one here where the threaded area is actually broken away from the porcelain. So when we went to take this one out, we were spinning this, but the plug would not come out of there. And on this one here, you can see where the whole bottom tip here is gone on this one. That stayed into the engine too. So then we thought, well now what the heck do we do? Well, I went on the internet and did some research. This is a big problem with these things. And I bought this tool that's made by Lyle. Uh, it's not an inexpensive tool. This thing was almost $100. But what it does is it goes in there and it gets the remnants of the spark plug out of there. Uh, and you got to be real delicate. It took us over a week's time to slowly put solvent down in the hole where the spark plug is and do what we got to do to get the pieces out. Because even this one here had the porcelain cracked down inside there. And we had to get those pieces out of there too. So what's the lesson to be learned here, like I always say with my videos? The lesson is to be learned here is that just because it's a new thing and new technology does not mean it's going to be better or an easier way to take out or to perform. So watch yourself when you're working on these newer Ford motors because they're not the best things in the world when it comes to maintenance on the spark plugs. You know, this is the second time in a month or so that I've seen this type of a trailer here. It's almost like an accordion, and the sides of it slide open like it's got curtains on it. It is the coolest thing. Uh, it's real efficient. These guys can get the cars in and out of these things really quickly. But that's only the second time I've seen them. 
I think it was episode maybe 13. I had a couple of Shelby's that we did got picked up by one of these things. Real nice setup. But uh, what got dropped off today is a 69 Super Cobra Jet car. The Super Cobra Jet cars had a few things going for them. They had an engine oil cooler on them that the other ones didn't have, which is what this thing is here. And they had to move the horn over and crowd them over on the one side to accommodate the, uh, the oil cooler on the driver's side. The other thing that these engines had were Le Mans rods they were refer referred to. A Le Mans rod is, a, is a, just a bigger, beefier connecting rod, so this thing can really take some high revs. I haven't looked this car over thoroughly. It just got uh, dropped off here. It should have either a 391 or a 410 gear ratio in it, uh, which will be part of the Super Cobra Jet package. Uh, but you know what? I'm kind of excited to get behind the wheel of this thing. I'm going to have to make sure that everything is the way it should be when it's all said and done on this one. Uh, I got some factory tires to put on it. This antenna doesn't exactly look correct either. So uh, we got our work cut out for us, but uh, somebody's got to do it, and it might as well be me. A 17-year-old suffering from a life-threatening heart condition will soon get the ride of her dreams. She loves classic cars, so the Make-A-Wish Foundation has teamed up with a local Mustang club to fully restore her 1967 Mustang Coupe. Fox Eyes Elizabeth Watts live now with the story for us. Elizabeth. John, Olivia, Vanessa knows that they are revamping her Mustang, but she has no idea they're literally restoring it from the ground up. The guys here at this shop and others in the Mustang community, they're putting their heart and soul into this project. Meet Stella, a 1967 Mustang Coupe. The car may not look like much, but a few months ago, she looked like this. The Make-A-Wish Foundation teamed up with Vegas Staying and the Mustang Club of Las Vegas for the makeover. So when they called me, I just figured, you know, I'll talk to some people that we have in the club and see what we can do, and it just blossomed from there. It's all for Vanessa, a 17-year-old with a heart condition. She is just a wonderful person, a uh, big heart. Although it's uh, failing her, she has a big heart. She's a, uh, we love her to pieces. We caught up with Vanessa at the monthly Mustang Club meeting where she's an honorary member. She says she bought the car off Craigslist. At the time, I was like getting out of a wheelchair. So yeah, not very mobile. And I brought my sob story with me and I got the car. The upbeat girl says she fell in love even though a facelift was in order. She actually looked terrible. She was like this really weird burgundy, like different colors. Now she hasn't seen the car for two months as it undergoes a massive restoration. Everyone involved says they're so fortunate to be a part of this wish. Because they originally came with us, they wanted to do just the interior, exterior, kind of make it look good. We're doing a complete ground up restoration on the car. Vanessa's thankful for all the hard work and she can't wait to see the finished masterpiece. I think it's amazing and I'm so grateful to have this opportunity and stuff. I am excited to see her and get her back because it's my baby, you know. So when it is all said and done, Vanessa will have a brand new 1967 Mustang Coupe. Now she did pick out the color. It's a pewter metal, but she will not see the car until it's all finished. And that should be revealed in about two weeks. Reporting live, Elizabeth Watts, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas. How did Vanessa come to love Mustang so much? Very cute story. You know, she is a typical teenage girl. Uh, she saw a Jonas brother drives a classic Mustang. She started doing her research, and then she realized that she loves the Mustangs, too. She loves how they sound and all of that. So very <laughs> cute story. She has excellent taste and great yes. story, Elizabeth. Thank you for bringing <laughs> that to us. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Operation Mustangs and More. Hope you learned something, because that's what this show is all about, to give out free how-to information for the guy in his garage that just can't afford to pay a shop like mine to do his work for him. Uh, go on to winthemustangs.com. It's the Mustang Dream Giveaway. They're giving away a couple of Shelbys here. It's for the wounded veterans, great cause, and you could win a few Shelbys. Also, I'm a writer now, and I'm making videos for Mustang Magazine. 
It's a new look at a classic Mustang. Check out this magazine and their Fox Mustang magazine. Heck, I'm giving away four subscriptions a week for the next few months to this magazine and the Fox magazine through my Facebook. Go to my Facebook, Operation Mustang, like me, I'll like you too, and you'll be entered to win air cleaners, wheels, waxes, subscriptions to magazines, all sorts of stuff. So visit me on my Facebook, and until next time, remember, this doctor, the doctor of restoration, I'm always in. Thanks for watching my show.